Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm carrying on the FL Studio Basics series by looking at automation clips. It's been a long time since I last covered this and quite a lot's changed. So the first half of the video is going to be some basic stuff, how to create them, edit them, delete them, and more importantly, what are they? And the second half of the video, I'm going to get into some more advanced tips and tricks, some really useful ways to use automation. So let's jump right in. So what is automation and why would you want to use it? Well, there's loads of times when you're working with audio where you'll be adjusting an EQ, changing the level of something or adjusting a control in a synth or sampler or something. And a lot of the time you just mix it and you leave it still. But there's loads of times when you actually want to adjust an effect in time with your song. For instance, you want to adjust the vocal volume between phrases. You want to add a lot more reverb during a certain part of a song. You want to make some instruments louder in the chorus. And automation is a way to achieve this. And luckily, it's very easy to do in FL Studio, but there's a few ways to sort of tweak it to make it perfect. To do this, you simply select the control you want to automate. So in this case, let's say it's the fader position of insert one. You simply right click and select create automation clip. And you'll see in my playlist, it's been added insert one volume. And it's just this sort of straight line. To adjust the position over time, we have to right click to add a control point. And now you can see I just left click and drag to move this around. So let's take a look. Now the fader will drop down to its minimum position and then rise back up. So this is a really basic and simple example. To delete these control points, you right click on one and delete. And then you'll also have noticed there when I right clicked, there was loads of different options for different types of points. So one that's very useful is hold points because you can create stepped effects like this, but there's lots of different types of curves and shapes to explore depending on what you want your automation to do. Maybe you're opening the filter of a synth and you want it to be quite smooth, or maybe you want it to be really sharp. But this is something that you're just gonna have to experiment with yourself. There's a few really important things I need to show you. And first is, you know, it, the way I've got it set up, I can move a point and nothing else is moving, it's all fine. However, you might have slide enabled at the top of your playlist and then moving a point slides all of them across. Now this is actually very helpful if that's what you wanna do, but it's very annoying if you don't notice that slide is turned on up there. I've just zoomed in to show you another uh, few shortcut keys. If you want to adjust uh, the position only uh, left and right and not up and down, you can hold shift and now the, the point only moves horizontally. And if you hold control with the point selected, it only moves up and down. You'll also notice that it's moving in these steps, locking into the uh, sort of grid behind. But if you press Alt, you can move it freely without locking it into the grid. And then you can also do combinations of Shift and Alt to move it freely side to side, or Control and Alt to move it smoothly up and down. The last thing to show you before we get into the more interesting stuff is how to delete the automation clip. So you can do that straight from the pattern picker here. Just right click and delete, or you can open up your channel rack find it and just delete it here. Now it will disappear from your project. However, you'll notice that if I move this fader and press play, it jumps back up to that initialized position or jumps down. And that's really frustrating. So now to remove that, you simply right click, select delete initial value. And now you are free again to adjust that however you like, and it won't be jumping up to that initial value anymore. Now that we've covered some of the basics of automation, I wanna get into some more uh, sort of useful tips and tricks. I'll try to keep these quite quick. The first is with third-party plugins like Serum, which are not native to FL Studio. If you wanna create an automation for something, there's no right-click control. So all you need to do is adjust the parameter and then go up to this at the top, multi-link controllers, give it a right-click and then just create an automation clip. And then you'll have an automation clip for that particular parameter in Serum and you'll see it adjusting just there. Another useful tip is cutting your automation clips. So just use the cut tool. And if you have sort of the right shape that you like, you can simply just keep copying it across into the rest of your project. This can get a little bit messy, which leads me on to the next tip. If you select multiple automation clips, now that was uh, using the pen tool, control, left click and drag over them on the playlist. If you then go to this drop down menu here and you select edit, merge automation clips. Now the um, shortcut is control alt G, but I'm not likely to remember that. So merge automation clips. 
and it will just merge them all into one nice and clean automation clip again. And if you go back to your pattern picker, you'll see that the original automation clip is actually here, uh, left preserved and uh, clean if you ever needed to go back to it, so there's no worries there. The next bunch of useful features are hidden away at the top left here. You give that a left click, and they're all in these articulator tools. So firstly, copy and paste state are extremely uh, useful. If you copy one automation clip and you just paste it into another, you can get the exact same shape. I'll just undo that with uh, Control Z. And also, if you go into the articulator tools, there's lots of other very useful features, uh, such as scaling levels, which allows you to just adjust. Well, an offset's really the most useful to me. It allows you to adjust all the positions. So say you like where it's set, but everything's too loud, you can just pull the whole thing down. I'll just go back to the articulator tools, and most of them are quite self-explanatory, but there's one that's really useful, which is smooth up. And you can see immediately what this did if I just reset. It takes it and it just it smooths it all out so you can you know link the attack and release but if you adjust this you can visibly see but it's more important to just listen back to the playback because sometimes on certain effects if you suddenly cut the wet or dry level of a reverb up instantaneously it might induce like a small click or pop or some other unwanted artifact often smoothing these out sounds a little bit more natural it sounds more like a human has pushed that fader up and down and sometimes it helps reduce some artifacts, but not always. So use your ears and see what sounds best. And I'm really glad you got to this point in the video because this final tip is actually my favorite and I use it all the time, especially in mastering. So I will be making a full start to finish uh, mastering uh, tutorial for this song I did. It's part of an album I was working on. And you'll see here, I've got an automation clip controlling balance. Now balance is a plugin which I have on my master chain, which just adds a little bit of gain. But you'll see it goes from all the way to the bottom, all the way to the top in the chorus. But this plugin can take away and add an absolute ton of gain. So clearly I'm not having no gain in the verses and tons and tons in the chorus. What I've done is range limited this. So I'll play this back, but with no audio. You'll see that in this section, it's at minus 0.3 dB. And then in the chorus, it goes to 0 dB. And then in the verse, it's at minus 0.5. So the automation clip from the bottom to the top is only adding half a dB of gain. And this is because I've range limited it. So I've told the clip, okay, the bottom is not actually going to be the bottom of this effect. And the top is not going to be the top. And how you do this is just a double click. And then there's a minimum and a maximum control here. So what you do is you select where you want the bottom of the effect to be. Let's say minus five is where I want the bottom of the automation clip to be. Uh, uh, right click, copy value, and then I paste that value into the minimum value of the automation clip. Now, here we're at minus five. And then let's go to the maximum and say the maximum value I want to be plus five dB. So I'll adjust it to five. 4.9 is close enough. <laughs> we'll do copy value, go to the max, paste value, and now my automation clip is adjusting from minus 5 to plus 5 dB, which would be way too much for mastering. That's 10 dB difference. Why I like this range limiting control is because there's so many times when you're working with the vocals where from the start to the finish of the song, you only want to adjust maybe 3 or 4 dB per word or per phrase but the automation clip is adjusting 100 dB or more. I think you get what I'm trying to say. I just like having a lot of control in the software. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you need any more FL Studio tutorials for virtually any topic, just look back through the video tab or search my channel. I've got a, a whole lot in this FL Studio series. And let me know if there's any videos that are maybe missing that you want to see me make in the future. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.